How's it going everybody? Too Spooky here. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, for it's finally this dreadful time of year. <coughs> I've only ever done a Christmas special like one other time on this channel, so I figured as a little present to you guys, we could do a video talking about a Christmas manga that I doubt any of you have heard of. That being Presents, by the queen of horror manga herself, Kanako Inuki. Kanako's work never really took off in the West, with only a few of her titles receiving a brief English release. But she was one of the most popular authors during the horror manga boom that happened during the 1990s. With the newfound resurgence and mainstream popularity of horror manga these days, I'm gonna predict that you'll be seeing her name around a bit more, as she recently had a short story collection released after no English releases for years. I'd recommend checking that out as well, and that release could very well lead to more of her works being released in English in due time. So that leads us to the Christmas horror manga, Presence. Except, it's not exclusively a Christmas manga. Get clickbaited, dork. <laughs> basically, the premise of Presence deals with basically any and every possible situation where giving or receiving presents is a normal thing to do, like giving birthday gifts, giving your romantic partner a present, and so much more, presented in an anthology format. Told from the perspective of Kurumi, a girl who never aged because she was never given any presents. As apparently when you open a present, you also receive the gift of age. This seemingly immortal Kurumi goes around looking for the present she never received, convinced she'll one day find it. And in the meantime, basically goes around punishing people who take their gifts for granted, take gifts away from others, so on and so on. As long as there are gifts to be found, Kurumi will be there too, in hopes to find her own. As far as the various punishments she inflicts, it happens in some pretty horrific ways. I wasn't kidding when I say this is a horror manga after all. Presence was originally serialized from 1993 to 1998 in the horror magazine Suspira, and would later see a brief English release in 2007 and 2008. These volumes have since gone heavily out of print, but if you can find them for a good price, I'd recommend scooping them up. Since this is more or less meant to be a manga recommendation video, I'm not going to spoil the contents of the various short stories found in Presence, because I implore you to check them out yourself if it sounds interesting in general. But one specific chapter I want to highlight is titled Santa's Presence, to really get us in that holiday spirit. As a manga all about giving and receiving gifts could never be complete without a section on Santa Claus and Christmas presents for that matter. And I have to say, this manga presents Santa in a way that I have never seen before. So at the beginning of this chapter, it is Christmas once again, and as Santa soars across the sky on his sleigh, he recognizes Kurumi from above and flies down to meet her, checking if she ever got the birthday present she was searching for, also mentioning that fewer and fewer children expect a gift from him each year, and therefore all the presents he carries are actually empty, offering one of the empty boxes to Kurumi. Inside this box shows all the kids that Santa had visited so far that fateful Christmas night also giving a supernatural glimpse into the future that would play out after they received their Christmas presents. The first child wrote a note to Santa asking him for what he truly wanted, the issue being that apparently parents all over the world assume they know what their kids want, and therefore pretend to be Santa themselves and get the kids gifts that they want to give them instead. But since Santa knows all, he is the only one that can truly make a Christmas miracle come true with the perfect gift. In this case, it was a baseball bat, as this child wanted nothing more than to be a famous baseball player. However, his parents want him to simply focus on his studies to be a doctor, but considering he ended up with this baseball bat from Santa anyways, they decided to sign him up for Little League so he could at least put it to good use. But this kid simply wasn't ready to put in the physical work that being a baseball player entails, and decided to quit right away also cheating on his studies at home because now he just didn't want to work hard at anything. This resentment led him on a rampage with his newfound present, going after his parents with the baseball bat and beating the shit out of them, leading to a downward spiral in life where he would get more and more evil, becoming a thief, a kidnapper, and even a murderer, ruining every life he would ever come in contact with from then on. And it all started with that present from Santa. But you see, once Santa touches a present that he's about to gift to a child, he sees the future that is in store for them. And even knowing the horrific future that awaits this child, Santa decides to give them the gift anyway, by using the bat to beat the life out of this kid to spare the lives of all those he would ruin in the future. That is his present to them. The second child he visited was a little girl, stuck in a poor family deep in debt. No special meals, no toys, and just a thin blanket to keep her warm. 
Children stuck in these situations are the exact reason Santa does what he does, and he gets out the gift she wants more than anything, a doll. Her family tries to get rid of it the next morning, but she refuses to give it up. After enjoying the present for a while, she demands her family buy some new clothes for her doll, especially because they never get her new clothes anyway, so they might as well do it for the doll, right? Her parents were far too poor to meet this request even if they wanted to, but eventually her father went to a local vendor that had doll clothes and began begging to please his daughter. And these nice new clothes for her doll would make her dream of a day where she would get lots of nice clothes given to her just like this. Seeing her father do this for her, she would then end up spending the rest of her life getting other men to buy things for her by manipulating them, which would lead her to end up with children of her own whom she heavily neglected, feeling absolutely no responsibility for them whatsoever, just wanting to live her lavish lifestyle, to the point where it was a straight up miracle they survived at all. Eventually, this would escalate, leaving three of her children alone with little money and no food for their infant sibling, coming back days or even weeks later to find that one of her children, the infant, had died, while the other two remained clinging to life completely malnourished. So naturally, she blames the two survivors and forces them to throw out their dead sibling in the trash. This cycle of abuse and neglect would end up taking the lives of all six of her children, one after another, as she would keep living her lavish lifestyle no matter what, and having one child after another, without even caring for them along the way. Honestly, has this lady never heard of birth control? Like, Jesus Christ. Seeing the horrible future these poor children would endure, Santa instead uses this doll for voodoo to give her the present of preventing this future permanently. The final child Santa shows us was one who wanted nothing more than the latest PC model, except Santa isn't exactly hip with the new technology. So his way of delivering this gift is by getting this child a winning lottery ticket to his local tech store so he can purchase the exact PC he wants. But since it's still a gift from Santa, he has to at least swing by and use his future sight on this gift to make sure it was the right decision. And at first, all seems well for a change. This child is incredibly smart, has a good head on his shoulders, and is admired by all of his peers, dreaming to one day go on and create the smartest computers the world has ever seen. However, it's quickly revealed that this child has a bit of a dark manipulative side, making sure to manipulate anyone in his way by getting others to do his bidding, or making them submit to him as their superior. This constant manipulation would continue throughout his entire life, until he was eventually in a position of extreme power with his tech, which would lead him to launch nukes and commit nuclear holocaust. All because Santa got him this computer in the first place. So being the supernatural being that Santa is, he throws this kid inside the computer into one of the video games, where he is then shut down for good. So yeah. As much as Santa himself is quite the horrific, all-powerful supernatural figure, he isn't even the scariest part of this holiday travesty. The real horror are these children. But luckily Santa took the phrase, f*** them kids, to the next level. I'm proud of that not-so-jolly fella. There's also another chapter later on that relates to Santa in a different way, called Santa, the man who wanted to be Santa Claus, which basically tells the story of an old man with many regrets, in the past, he worked so hard to provide for his family, but through working so hard all the time, he ended up failing to truly be there for them and appreciate them, now being much older and completely alone without the family he worked so hard for. And one fateful night, he found a little girl crying and decided to buy her a balloon to try and cheer her up, finding newfound appreciation and purpose in making people feel better with his thoughtful gesture. And since the night happened to be Christmas Eve, the girl confused him for Santa, Therefore, he now wants to become Santa and spread cheer to kids everywhere. And after trying for so long and being completely poor, with nothing but empty boxes to give, he now wants nothing more than to give the gift of heart. As at the end of the day, it's the thought that counts. However, nobody wants his gifts, until two kids come along who don't mind that they're just empty presents. Two kids who can truly appreciate the thought of a heartfelt gift. But as it turns out, there were toys in them after all. And finally bringing cheer to those kids allowed the man to peacefully pass on in his sleep, having finally become Santa. In the background, it turns out the real Santa used his supernatural powers to put toys in those boxes from afar. Santa can butcher a kid no problem and save the world from nuclear holocaust, but he can also help a broken old man bring some joy to kids on Christmas. Truly touching. So if you're looking for some wholesome terror this holiday season, Presents has got you covered. 
Thanks so much for watching this video today. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe with those notifications on so you don't miss the next video. I hope you all have a lovely holiday season and a happy new year. I appreciate you all sticking by me. This year has been quite the crazy one to say the least. And I have no doubt that 2023 is somehow going to be even crazier. But as always, I have a bunch of huge projects and plans in the works, so stay tuned. Additionally, big thanks to BleachShipu5678 for not only editing this video, but the last couple videos as well. This wouldn't have been possible without him, and I hope you show him some love this holiday season as well. Thanks again, and I'll catch you all next year with a new video. I let the years go by so quickly, I don't know if I feel